Blog Talk Radio. Hi and welcome to the show. This is Self Education Radio with your host, Mr. Prince J. Avery. And I'm uh, sorry for the delay. I had a few technical difficulties trying to get connected to the live broadcast. But we're back on the air now. And uh, today, what we're going to discuss... Today, what we're going to discuss is that oddball who doesn't fit in. That kid who just doesn't seem to fit in. But before I get into that, what is the point of our show? And what do we mean when we talk about self-education? What is the purpose behind everything we're doing here? Self-education is something that everyone does. When you pick up on the latest slang that's going around in your area, that's self-education. When you start dressing like your peers, that's what I call self-education. When you learn how to drive and navigate your way around your local area, that's self-education. When you learn how to dance by watching other dancers move on TV, or when you buy the DVDs or the tapes, whatever, that's self-education also. When you learn how to cook by reading the recipe book and experimenting yourself, that's also part of self-education. And when you learn how to compose instrumentals by simply doing it every day, or when you learn how to play an instrument, when you learn how to fix minor things on your car, like changing the tires, changing the oil, changing the alternator or battery and the starter, that's all self-education. When you learn how to clean the house by simply having to do it and trying what works and what doesn't, when you learn how to eat healthy and exercise by going to the gym or doing the physical activities that you're into, that's all self-education. And when you learn how to swim, how to use new gadgets, or how to garden, or take care of your lawn, see, this is all self-education. And I could go on for days, but you see the point that I'm making is that self-education is the norm. Self-education is what we do most of the time when we need to learn the most critical skills needed for a functional life, such as learning how to walk, as infants and learning how to speak as toddlers. You see, there is no government mandated school for any of these skills that we couldn't live without. So why is it that when people decide to opt out of government mandated schools in their teenage years, we treat them as if their academic life is over? When there are obviously thousands of ways to learn the same skills and information. You see, Self-education does not mean no schooling, period. It means self-directed schooling based on your own interests and talents. If you're not in school, once you hit 18, you better move out. That's what we're told. So those who go to the traditional route of schooling, the schooling directed by the desire for a stable job with a nice paycheck, are provided a social cushion in the environment to make the best of their education by not having to worry about bills, room and board, food, whatever. You just had to go to school and pay for classes. Those who want to first find themselves and then direct their own education through alternative means are kicked to the curb and forced to have to deal with the harsh realities of life long before they are really able to get their goals accomplished. Now, I'm generalizing here, and sometimes you have the opposite happen. It depends on who your parents are. But what I'm saying is based on my own personal experience and the people around me, and I know I'm not the only one. See, the problem with self-education is that presently it's mostly an isolated process where the students and people are left on their own to find their way. Most dropouts or homeschoolers do not have support networks 
or guidance when it comes to sharing resources and tools to make this self-education journey easier. There are many educational resources, but not too many people connecting the dots and helping these students turn their human capital into great careers and businesses. Most who choose self-education are told that they will earn less money and that they only have a few low-paying options as careers. Now, this is simply false, and in my opinion, the most personally liberating and character-building careers do not require school. Here's a couple of reasons why this is the case. If you're teaching yourself the things you want to learn how to do and putting in enough energy to actually reach professional level, you probably have twice the self-motivation and have exerted twice the willpower and energy that anyone in school who's just doing schoolwork has expended. And by not only learning but developing your own curriculum, you gain a perspective and level of expertise on the topic that are of great value to customers, not so much to the schools and to teachers. See, to turn your human capital and the skills you possess into a sort of income require you to learn skills that for the most part may be unrelated to your main interests. Being the best at what you do in the world means nothing if you do not have the ability to sell yourself and make the service public knowledge. See, in the school and government supported employment web, filling out a job application is all one needs to do, which bypasses the need to learn what is going to cost the room from them in the marketing, billing, and finance departments. All they have to know is how to do their own personal job and stick to that for 20 years. This is how we end up with so many scientists who can only think one way about things and fail to connect the dots present when you start looking at the bigger picture. The Thunderbolts Project is a YouTube channel that talks about how the physical universe is mostly electric. Mainstream physicists claim that electricity does not play a major role in the movement of the stars and alignment of the planets. But the engineers across the room from them, or a couple of buildings down from them, seem to claim otherwise, even offering solutions to many of their so-called unresolved problems through simple lab experiments and principles that have been known since the late 1800s. If these academics theoretical physicists, to be exact, in this example, were more like engineers who are active in the process of translating scientific discovery into real products people use and pay for, instead of relying on money handed to them through government grants, they would also have the need to go across the room and explore what other fields of research may be able to contribute to their own research. But to the contrary, though, this mentally compartmentalized group ignores everyone else's input due to lack of exposure. Well, so what about that kid who doesn't fit in? Now that you know what self-education is about, let me go into what this show is really about. This show is really about those of us who just don't want to go to school, plain and simple, who just feel that we could do better on our own time. You see, back when I was in school, I would spend most of my free time, like during lunch, in between classes. I would try to sneak a few minutes in between classes to go to the library and check out some books, maybe sometimes after school, before school. I was always reading books on subjects and topics that the school wouldn't let us get into yet. For instance, let's say I had a, I had a very strong interest in engineering and electronics, building stuff, making things, programming, that type of stuff. I wanted to make robots. I wanted to make toys. Every toy that I ever got, every gadget that I ever looked at, I wanted to know how it worked. And ever since being the child, I just always wondered. It was just, it was just a big mystery to me, like how does this stuff work? Even back when I was in Africa, I used to always wonder, you know, and I used to make uh, little paper toys. And I remember back in my school, they kind of got popular. Everybody started making them. I used to make little paper toys where you tap, and the little characters, stick figures, you draw on them, start dancing around, whatever. Nothing major, you know, it's Africa. We don't have much to work with over there. It's the same. 
But even then, no one around me, or there weren't really any sources telling me how this stuff really worked. And any time I could get my hands onto any bit of information that even remotely told me or gave me a hint how those things worked, I would get into it. But there weren't a lot of resources around to learn these things, you know, back where I was. So when I when I first got to the States, I couldn't wait to get into this stuff because I'm watching movies, I'm watching TV shows where you have, you know, the kids making robots, making toys, building all kinds of stuff, running around and using it. And you're like, well, yeah, I want to do that stuff too. That's what I want to do. I want to be De Dexter the, what, you know, Dexter the mad scientist, what was his name? Dexter's man. Yes, that, that, those were the people I idolized. So I'm in there reading every book I can about electronics and engineering, and I'm actually learning how to do this stuff. Problem is, we didn't really have a lot of money to actually buy this stuff and put it into practice. Or maybe we did, and we just didn't use it that way. You know, who knows? I was just a kid at the time. I mean, I eventually learned this stuff, learned to get myself out of program. I eventually, you know, we, we got to the point where I was building robots. But it took me two years of high school because you couldn't get into engineering. And I mean, there was a there were electronics classes that I wanted to take. You couldn't get into those classes being a freshman in in high school. You had to wait till you were either I believe I was a sophomore or a junior before you could take the faculty. Yes, you had to be the junior first. So I had to go through two years of high school where I was just taking maybe extra classes, prerequisite courses waiting through the curriculum. This was my experience. I just felt like I was sitting there waiting through the curriculum because I already know the end goal. I've read the electronics books. I already know where they're going with it, what they're going to teach us, which is why half of the time when I was in those classes, I already knew what the teacher was going to teach 